In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk all about testosterone. Now, there seems to be an epidemic of low testosterone levels. And this is real, by the way. Um, scientists are now discovering that uh, testosterone levels seem to have been dropping for the last few decades. A lot of young men are noticing the effects of low testosterone. Lack of muscle mass, higher body fat levels, low energy, low sex drive, low motivation. So in this episode, we talk about seven all-natural ways to raise testosterone. So these seven ways that we talk about are, are backed by studies and science and also through our experience. So we talk all about everything from lifting weights to your diet, uh, stress management, sleep, the kinds of nutrients that you're going to want to pay attention to to make sure that your testosterone levels move up high. We talk about sunlight, vitamin D, and we talk about estrogen-like compounds that you may want to avoid because we're finding that they may actually lower testosterone levels. Now, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Four Sigmatic. Now, Four Sigmatic is a company that specializes in superfoods, functional mushrooms, and adaptogenic herbs. Now, the range of products goes across a huge category of coffee, hot cocoa, elixirs, matcha lattes, lemonade, and blends. In fact, in this episode, we talk about adaptogenic herbs and how they can raise testosterone. And Four Sigmatic has an adaptogenic blend that contains ashwagandha and Siberian ginseng, both of which have been shown to raise testosterone in men who have low testosterone. Um, and we have a discount code for you. If you go to Four Sigmatic, that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump. If you use the code mind pump at checkout, you get 15% off. Also, MAPS HIT, this is our high intensity interval training program. 50% off, huge sale, it's half off. Now, this is a full workout program designed to burn the most amount of body fat in the shortest amount of time. HIIT workouts are intense but short. Um, they're very effective. A 20-minute high-intensity interval training session will burn as many calories or as much body fat as a longer traditional workout. So if you're interested in burning body fat quickly in a short period of time, this is the program for you, and it's programmed appropriately. It's done the right way using weights so you don't lose muscle. You'll love this program. Again, it's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com, and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. I have something that I want to talk about. What's that? Oh. Yeah. I'm excited. You have I, a topic? You get excited. <laughs> I do. What are you going to say? I do. I do. No, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was, I love when we have done episodes or YouTube clips um, that are like topic specific that on questions that I get a lot. So I can just kind of reference like, here, go listen to us talk in detail with this. And one that I get all the time, and we don't have a single episode where we do like a deep dive. <laughs> Uh, on this conversation, but of course it's come up many times because I've shared my journey and that pertains to um, increasing your testosterone levels naturally. Oh, right. Uh, I get a lot of message so do I. around this yeah. this topic <laughs> and I find myself kind of going, having to go back and forth and explain things and ask questions. And I'm like, you know what? We should do a, a good deep dive on like all the different things that um, I've done to try and naturally bring my my testosterone levels back up and things that you should probably address and look out. I think that's a, a really hot topic. Well, it's 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 also a hot topic um, in the research and medical community. Uh, and it has been now for the last, I'd say, 10 years because researchers have realized that testosterone levels in men, average levels, have been consistently declining for the last three or four, maybe even more, maybe even five decades, um, consistently. Um, since the 1980s, in fact, on average, the average testosterone levels as tested in men has been going down by 1% hmm. every year. So there's definitely something that is, uh, that's going on. What do they think is the biggest offender if they had to like – Posted up on like the a list of like one like one of the main factors that's causing this. Well, there's, they don't know for sure, but there's a few theories. Um, a few theories to what may be causing this. Um, one is inactivity. Two would be diet. 
Uh, and three would be exposure to chemicals that could be considered hormone uh, disruptors. Do they really I, rate that one up there that high? They do. They, really? Yeah, they do talk about that one. Um, because That's something that like the uh, hardcore science guys really bash the wellness people that that talk about things like that. Mm, well, in in uh, in when it comes to like a fetus and how that'll affect the fetus long term, mm-hmm. um, it, there's been cases where boys have been using products and getting estrogenic like side effects, and you know their endocrinologists are removing those products. And the estrogenic side effects go down, uh, but these are all theories. It's probably a combination of all these things. Yeah, it's which, a multitude of factors for sure. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of information around testosterone, and some of it is myths. Um, now, before we get into that, um, of course, for those of you listening who don't know what testosterone is or why it's important, it is the primary male hormone. It's responsible for uh, masculinizing effects in men. Um, it's responsible for drive and motivation. Even in women, it's responsible somewhat for that. Uh, women have a little bit of testosterone, and it gives them that too. Strength and muscle gain, symptoms of low testosterone. You don't recover very well from workouts. You don't feel strong. You have lack motivation, low sex drive, depression, um, bone loss. Um, you, you, you want good, healthy, natural, high levels of testosterone, for health, heart disease, heart attacks, cancers have been connected to low testosterone levels. Whereas high normal natural levels of testosterone have been shown to be protective against lots of disease. So when you look at some of the warnings of like too much testosterone, they're referring to uh, probably exogenous testosterone where people inject themselves with it. But if your yeah. testosterone levels are high naturally, um, it's healthier for you. Well, what's your what's your thoughts too on the ability for it to contribute to building muscle for someone too? Like comparing somebody who has uh, moderately low testosterone naturally to somebody who has higher levels of testosterone naturally. I mean, I would speculate that the person with naturally higher levels would build muscle significantly easier than somebody who has moderate to low. Yeah, there's a lot of factors, right? There's like your workout, your diet. There's other factors in genetics that determine muscle building. But if all things are equal, let's say you have two twins, one guy's got low testosterone, the other guy's got high testosterone, all within the natural range, you're going to, yes, you're going to build more muscle, you're going to be leaner, you're, you're going to be stronger, more motivated, you're going to- Higher have, energy level, Higher energy, all like better sex drive. It's going to make a significant difference. It's the, it's the primary male hormone. Um, so when it's low- all the stuff that makes you feel good, um, you know, all all those good feelings can can start to decline. So it becomes a big problem. And again, it's a big problem right now uh, in modern societies. We're see, we're seeing this kind of this this consistent drop, uh, which is kind of interesting. One myth that's out there um, is that testosterone levels uh, l- go down as you age, um, mm. and 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 it's not really it's not a full myth, but I think we attribute the lowering of testosterone to the fact that you're aging. Right. But what they're finding with studies is that a much bigger part of the lowering testosterone levels as you age is due to behavior and health changes, Mm. not due to the fact that you're just older. Well, and Uh. I think we've known this as trainers for years because I'm sure you guys have got stories. I've got stories of clients that I've trained in their mid to late 50s that would, after we got their diet dialed in, I addressed sleep, I, I, I checked off all the boxes uh, that they would be reporting back to me having higher higher levels than they've ever had. Every naturally. single time. And so, you know, it, it, yeah, you can you can be getting old. I think those I think those studies are because we take a a, a mass, you know, the, the, the average. Yeah, we just take a group of old of people. Yeah, old yeah. people and say, oh, it looks like in, you know, generally speaking, you know, mm-hmm. 10,000 people that are 65 years old yeah. have lower testosterone levels than 10,000 people that are 30 years old. Of course that speaks to the behavior. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just like it, whatever you've done, like leading up to that, like, I mean, it, it's going to end up resulting in, you know, your, your health is going to be affected by that. Well, it's like the metabolism thing. Mm-hmm. It's just like that. People think that they're stuck with this terrible metabolism or as you age, your metabolism slows down. It's like, well, no, not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, you can, you could speed your metabolism up as you get older. Yeah. If you do all the right yeah. things, as far as nutrition and exercise, Size. Now, the, the, of course, the male body does age, so age does yeah. happen to you. You do start to suffer some of the, the side sure. effects or whatever you want to say of aging. But you could maintain a pretty yeah. consistent level of testosterone if you were yes. to keep going. Now, hormone, look, here's the deal. You're still going to get older, okay? You're not going to live forever. But you can keep your testosterone levels high 
up until the end, and the studies are showing that now. Now, the reason why older men have lower testosterone, what some of these studies are saying, is because as men get older, they stop exercising as much. Yeah. They stop getting as much sunlight. They don't. Their diets tend to go. Their body fat percentage goes up. Yeah, it, absolutely. And this is why you see this. But when when they compare <clears throat> healthy, active, strong older men to younger men, the the decline is very small. It's very very small. I've had so I I love training uh, men and women in advanced age, which I would say anything over sixty five I would consider advanced age as far as exercise is concerned. And every time I train men. Uh, not every time, but most of the time, I would request to see uh, if they got their testosterone levels checked. It's an easy test, and it's an easy way to, for for us to gauge, you know, certain, you know, uh, is the workouts working? Are we yeah. moving in the right it's direction? A good check it. engine light. And my fit and healthy male clients over sixty five, the ones that lifted weights were strong, followed a good diet, all their testosterone levels were great. I had one guy I trained; he was almost seventy, and his testosterone levels tested almost at seven hundred. Um, uh, every time he tested every single year and it was always up there. And this guy was almost seven years old. Men don't go through the same big hormonal changes that women do. You know, women go through menopause when their bodies stop, uh, being able to have babies. Yeah. A man's body when they're healthy, theoretically is able to can pr produce sperm till the day you die and, and, and theoretically get a woman pregnant. So your testosterone, your, your testosterone levels are heavily, heavily influenced, uh, by your lifestyle and your behaviors. So if you're a younger man, and this is where the epidemic is happening right now, the epidemic we're seeing, and it's across the board, but especially in younger men. So this question was never asked. I, as a trainer early, I never had a 20-year-old ask me how to raise their testosterone when I was in my 20s. Yeah. Now, almost every question, every person that asked me how to raise testosterone is Young. some kid yeah, in his 20s who went and got tested Crazy. and saw that they had low testosterone <clears throat> levels. So um, they're heavily influenced by behavior. So I think we should go through – just the most impactful things that can raise uh, testosterone levels and and that can do it naturally. We're not talking about taking t steroids. We're not talking about um, anything illegal or anything crazy. These are ways that can raise, and they can substantially raise your testosterone. I have seen it countless times. I have one man, in, in uh, one guy in particular that I can think of. He was 32 who came to me was on the border of, of whether or not he was going to do uh, hormone replacement therapy. His testosterone levels were measuring uh, right in the high 100, so just under 200. Wanted to get, uh, you know, go to the doctor and get the, the the testosterone creams or whatever. And I told him, give me six months, do what I say, let's see what happens. He went from having testosterone levels at a, of a 180 to over 560. Mm. That's a massive increase in testosterone just from lifestyle. And I used to see that stuff all the time. At the very least, you will notice a boost. I don't know if we'll necessarily cure right. uh, your low levels, but you'll definitely uh, most most likely see a raise. Well, when we when we organized this conversation, we sat down and, and listed you know what we thought were seven of the most uh, impactful. And there was a little bit of a debate on what would be five or six or back and forth. But there was no debate between the three of us uh, about what we for sure said the number one thing that you can do to increase testosterone levels naturally. And I think that's just, for me, personal experience, what uh, what I went through, also mm -hmm. all the clients that I've trained, uh, the, the single most impactful thing uh, that you can do to naturally increase testosterone levels is to lift weights. But that's hands it. down- Heavy weights. By, by the way, they have compared- different forms of exercise on on raising testosterone levels so they've com they've compared more cardiovascular type training more you know stretching type stuff they've compared athletic playing athletic sports hiking and they've also compared uh lifting weights traditional weight training and hands down lifting weights raised testosterone significantly more than all the other forms of exercise although all the all forms of exercise will raise testosterone so if you're if you're inactive, any activity will raise testosterone. Is that true? Even uh, cardiovascular, when you talk so about so long as you don't overdo it, right? But right. if you're inactive, if you're just a couch potato, and then you go and you do, you know, you go do some walking on the treadmill or light jogging, as long as you don't overdo it, just through the simple fact of improving your health. Because in my experience, I've I've seen negative effects from somebody who go like that goes to do like marathons or overdoing run, it. Yes, uh, that yeah. long distance running. When you're also trying to increase testosterone. No, that's levels. a good point. Um, over training or overdoing it um, will uh, do the opposite effect. Yeah, Even lifting weights. Impact. 
Even lifting weights. If you go to lift weights and right. you go and just beat the crap out of yourself way over what you Well, I remember when, when the, I was going through this, um, it was like I was only doing like two, maybe three. Like a good week was three days. A normal week would be two days, full body. Uh, and then just making sure that I started every workout with like the, a major compound lift. Uh, normally it would be squatting or deadlifting. Mm -hmm. If it was an upper body type of lead day for me, it would be benching. But doing those big compound lifts first and just doing that two, maybe three times a week, mm -hmm. uh, strength focus was the probably the biggest impact for me. Oh, and the studies support it. Again, resistance training in the short term and the long term is superior for raising testosterone in comparison to all other forms of exercise. And the way you want to lift weights is exactly what Adam's saying. Your goal is to go in the gym and get stronger. Use strength. If you're trying to raise testosterone, the single best, almost, it's not totally bulletproof, but almost bulletproof metric you can use to, that will, to gauge whether or not your workout is helping testosterone is whether or not you're getting stronger consistently. That's mm -hmm. probably, it's the easiest metric. So don't worry about how pumped you are or if you got sore or if, if you got a great sweat, yeah. it, am I stronger this week than I was last week? If that's happening consistently, which is a problem for you know a lot of men, especially that I've trained, is that they want to attack everything at once and they want to come in like, okay, yeah. if, if resistance training is the way for me to boost testosterone, well, why don't I just keep going? Why don't I keep doing harder you know sessions and, and f more frequent hard sessions uh, where you know it, it it really is it's dose dependent. Like you want to make sure you get the right amounts. So then you can also recover and, and, and gain all those benefits uh, that will help to, to raise your level of testosterone. I, I've also taught clients that when we, we want to leave the gym still wanting more. That's what I would say to them. Like you don't want to leave the gym. Like, Spent. Yes. Like mm. you, oh my, you don't, you're not looking for that. Oh my God, that workout was crushed me yeah. or wobbling out. You can barely walk. You want to you want to walk out going like ooh I want I want more I energized yes yes you want that's the feeling you're especially for somebody I think that's a a good gauge period for most people yeah but it's extremely important I feel for this category of people that have low testosterone you're seeking that you know I guess you get a good workout and it fuels the rest of the day so some some feedback I used to get from some of my male clients back in the day who were in this predicament was. At the end of of appropriate good you know workouts, they felt uh, their libido rise after the workout. So they yes. would tell me, "Oh man, after my workout, like I want to go have sex with my wife, or I want to go have sex with my girlfriend." Overdoing it, you'll feel the opposite. Yep. If you overdo it, you'll leave your workout and sex is the last thing on your mind. Yeah. You couldn't perform even if you tried. So you should definitely feel at the end of your workout aggressive. You should feel some drive, maybe feel a little bit of higher libido. You should feel good. That's a good – and you should get stronger every workout. It's the best metric because mm -hmm. if your squat's going up, your bench press is going up, your deadlift, your prep, your rows, if those are all going up slowly but consistently, then you know you're doing most things right because if you're not doing most things right, you won't get stronger. So I'd say that's got to be the number and, one. And those listening that have been listening for a long time may remember uh, when I was talking about this and going through this, uh, you know, sometimes the workout was just squats. You know, I was like, I I didn't have uh, the, the energy or the desire to really go lift because, you know, part of low testosterone levels too, sometimes you feel depressed and you feel down and tired and mm -hmm. weak. And, you know, those aren't the most motivating things when you're trying to get into the gym. So what I found is, you know, hey, sometimes I just get to the gym and it, I would squat five to six sets of squats and that would be it. But I would focus on being strong in them and then get out of the gym and just doing that I felt the, an, an impact yeah. now now why does resistance training uh, well first off why does exercise rest raise testosterone versus being inactive you're just healthier so a healthier body is going to have more healthy levels uh, it's going to be reflected uh, in healthy le healthy levels of testosterone but why is resistance training so effective because it's telling your body to build muscle yeah. and one of the the primary driving muscle building driving hormones is testosterone. So when you lift weights properly and you're getting stronger, the signal your body is getting is we need to build muscle. Your body sets out to build that muscle and it needs testosterone to do so. So it's actually signaling itself, hey, raise testosterone, we need to build some muscle. So that's the main reason why it's so effective. I would say it's the main reason why we're seeing testosterone levels decline in in, in young men, for sure. We're just... Mm. You know, in the past, m many jobs were manual labor. We were very active. 
Uh, we were, you know, stronger. Studies show this. They did they do a grip test study where they had, you know, college aged men squeezing a gripper. They tested it. They they compared it to a 1980s version of the test. So their dads, the one that their dads did, mm -hmm. and they were significantly weaker. I think men today in their 20s have the average grip strength of men in their 50s. In the 1980s, we're just and it's there's nothing happening yeah. to us genetically. We're just not active. It's just a shift, yeah, in behaviors. And I think too, yeah, like there's been a lot less involvement in high stakes type sports like physical contact sports. There's been a drop in that, and there's just been different priorities. And and, and jobs look completely different now to where you know there's a lot more like mm -hmm. you know we're sitting down, we're looking at a screen. It's just a different environment that now we have to do extra just to make sure that our body is healthy. Ooh. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's really unpopular also, which is you I guarantee you that these circuit based high intensity type classes is not conducive to this person, this category. No. And there's it's too a, much intensity. You got low testosterone, you're gonna go do a circuit. You're yeah. just moving fast. And yeah. there's a lot of people that, you know, when they when they start back in their fitness routine, um, that gravitate towards these group training type classes and or CrossFit. And when you're trying to uh, raise testosterone levels naturally, this is not the ideal modality no, for The you. best routine yep. for, for boosting testosterone would be MAPS Anabolic. Hands down, best program that we offer for testosterone boosting. And I would start with the two-day-a-week option in the program and the trigger sessions on the other days. That is a very strength-oriented, build muscle-oriented, raise testosterone-oriented type of, of program. I would not recommend doing circuit training or, you know, just crazy high intense, you know, nonstop type workouts. You know, in fact, uh, in terms of resistance training for, t for raising testosterone, there was another, another study that I had pulled up that showed that obese men raise testosterone more by lifting weights than they did just by losing weight. Mm. So even obese men, you know, we know that when someone's really obese and they get leaner, the their testosterone will rise. They showed that even if they didn't lose weight, just lifting weights raised their testosterone more than losing weight did. Wow. Uh, That's yeah. how big of an impact it has uh, on the body. All right. The second one is, 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 is going to be your diet. But this one's, this one's a little bit more uh, – this one's pretty crucial, but it's, it's not as specific. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we'll talk about proteins, fats, and carbs and how to cut them and cut your calories, this kind of stuff. Studies show that being too low in anything mm -hmm. is not good for testosterone. So you have to have a high protein diet to build muscle and for testosterone. Fat needs to be adequate for testosterone, and so do carbs. Going really low carb, even if your calories are high, yeah. might actually be negative for the way your body well, produces we, testosterone. We recently had a, a, a great episode with our, our friend Jason Phillips, and you know this kind of reminds me of how we were talking about regardless of the person's goal, weight loss. We we talk about getting the body healthy first, and part of getting the body healthy first is just really looking at where your caloric maintenance currently is at. So wherever, and that's even if you're off the quote unquote diet, figuring out where your caloric maintenance is and just replacing some of the foods that are lower in value nutritionally and with just higher nutrient dense foods into the diet, not trying to restrict a bunch of calories and yeah. go on a diet and cut, but to actually keep the body fueled, give it what you're, you're used to eating on a regular basis, but just make exchanges for you know, better choices with in conjunction with lifting weights is the most ideal way. Yeah. And, and, and which is counter to what I think is common knowledge. I think most people think that, oh, I'm, you know, need to get in the gym and I'm overweight. That's contributing to my low testosterone. So I want to go in and go on a diet right away. And they start with restricting calories. And that's not how I would take somebody like this. I would assess where they're currently eating calorie wise and then replace probably some of the choices with higher nutrient dense foods and keep their calories actually up, but more balanced. It just goes back to that, you know, that old adage, a healthy balanced meal. You know, it's like you want to give your body a chance to, your, to have the building blocks, you know, for your muscle to then uh, be able to build and develop uh, properly. I think that we overcomplicate this part uh, all the time and we're trying to do things to, to hack this Goldilocks zone of being able to like stay super lean, but then also try and build muscle and this, and it, and it takes a little bit away, uh, you know, from the, where the body is most optimal and mm -hmm. being able to stay healthy and remain healthy. Yeah. Now, a good rule of thumb would be uh, avoid heavily processed foods. They just don't really do anybody really much good. So stick to whole natural foods. As far as the macros are concerned, for protein, anywhere between about 0.5 to 1 gram of, uh, of protein per pound of body weight, if you're relatively lean, 
if you're obese and use lean body mass. Carbs, you can go as low as a one-to-one protein-to-carb ratio. In other words, if you're eating 200 grams of car- protein, 200 grams of carbs, that would be the lowest that would go. Um, but you probably want to be about 50% higher than that in carbs. And then fat makes up the difference. So ultimately, what your diet's going to look like is it's going to kind of look balanced. You're going to have, you know, you're not gonna, nothing's going to be too low. Every You're going to have a little bit of, of everything. The fats are essential for the production of hormones. Too low of fat definitely low, affects testosterone. Very, very low carbs does the same thing. Very low carbs has been shown to lower, lower testosterone as well. Now, here's the caveat. If the diet that you're following is optimal for your health, then that's going to be the best one for testosterone. So right. if you're somebody that low carbs uh, works best with your health, uh, carbohydrates affect your gut negatively, you get lots of inflammation, maybe you have lots of food intolerances to grains or other high-carb foods, starchy vegetables, then low carb is probably going to be ideal for you for testosterone as well. So at the end of the day, what what, what trumps all of this is the diet that makes you well, healthiest. Haven't the they that- haven't they had studies around? Uh, there's isn't there a connection between low fat diets and low testosterone levels? There that's, are. That's mm-hmm. not ideal. Really low fat diets at all when it comes to testosterone. It, it, it usually isn't, but there may be a case where there's somebody that just like doesn't respond well. Maybe they have gallbladder. You know, issues or whatever. They just don't. They don't digest fats very well. So right. So that their- that would be the small exception to the rule. But I would say uh, probably one of the most common and popular things that I'd see because a lot of people that I would I would coach or train that were dealing with low testosterone levels also come from the era of they grew up in the you know fat is bad for us yeah. and so they avoided uh, a lot of fat foods and when i looked at their diet i'm like man you're yeah. you're missing a lot of healthy fats in here and i just by Not bumping to mention it's essential right so just by me bumping up uh, their healthy fats in their diet uh, would actually make a surge and a difference so you know for me personally i'm looking for almost a, like an even balance across the board mm-hmm. and let them you know make sure you hit your protein intake and then carbs and fat are pretty equally balanced in their diet and how much that seems to be unless you're like yeah we're all biodiverse i mean there's there's lots of variables out there and everybody can you know do the best on like one specific way of eating but i think a good place to start is at least like you consider the balanced approach first and then extract whatever like may be inflammatory to you you know going forward yeah yeah oh here's another thing on 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 uh, testosterone probably not a good idea to do lots of fasting um, mm-hmm. fasting, uh, long periods of fasting or too consistent fasting spikes cortisol and can have a testosterone lowering effect on somebody, especially someone with really low testosterone. If you have low testosterone, for example, if you were, a, if you came to me as a client, as a listener and you're like, Hey, I have low testosterone. Should I do a, a, you know, 12, fa- 12 hour fast every day or 24 hour fast every other week? I'd say, probably, probably say no. Say no, testosterone is low. Let's not have you do the fasting. Go ahead and just eat your breakfast, lunch, and dinner because mm-hmm. um, that might have a negative effect. Um, the next one, um, this is a big one, and this is one that I ignored uh, for a long time, personally. Sleep. Sleep plays a huge role uh, in how your body utilize, how your body produces testosterone, whether it produces enough testosterone. Um, it, it, it's got a massive, massive impact on your body's ability to recover, build muscle, this is something I didn't take seriously until uh, relatively recently. Well, and I think this is a growing problem too. I think that uh, I and I know there's not a lot of research to support what I'm going to say, but I know that I, you can just tell that there's got to be a major difference of the television screens that we have today and the ability to stream and binge watch yeah. TV. That's just, it's different than what it was just a decade and a half ago. It wasn't like this. Like, you didn't catch your, at least. Uh, yeah, nobody needed blue blocker glasses, uh, you know, a decade or so ago. I mean, the the high def, you know, LED screens now are so vibrant. Plus, there was never anything on TV past, like, that's, 10, yeah, exactly. 10 o'clock at that night. programming wasn't there. And you wouldn't, exactly. And even if there was something, it was your one show, maybe two shows. But now, and I know people listening right now, that that are honest with themselves everybody's done this before where at six or seven o'clock at night they get hooked on their favorite netflix show and they binge through four or five episodes straight until 10 11 o'clock or midnight and then you try and go to sleep you know how much that disrupts your ability to fall to fall asleep and then to get into your REM. like 
I just think that's happening so much more than what we what we saw before. And even though this was always important, it's even more important today that you build a routine around getting ready for bed the same way yeah. you have a routine around getting up and getting ready for work. Not totally. to mention, uh, you know, to kind of piggyback on the whole screen thing, like with my phone, uh, for instance, like not just having it away from like where I was, like I used to have it right next to, the, to my bed and it, it, like I would get no notifications. I would get like text messages, like things would happen that you're like, ah, oh, whatever. Like it's, it's there. It, I, I don't really think it's affecting me much, but it was amazing how much that was affecting me. And just knowing that, you know, like if I haven't heard like a little bit of a buzz or something, like it would totally take me out of, of the kind of sleep that I was in right then. So I had to remove it and put it in the other room and it's been a life changer. For yeah. Me. Well, here's, here's a, here's a couple studies for you. Uh, one study showed that, uh, when people slept for only five hours a night, it was connected to a 15 to 20% reduction in testosterone. Okay. Here's another one. That's a lot. This is a long-term study. What this study showed that for every additional hour of sleep that you get, your testosterone levels can rise by about 15% or higher on average. Okay, so if you're listening right now and you're being very honest, calculate how many hours you get to sleep. You get you get uh, you sleep every single night. Now you want to give you you want to add about a uh, or reduce take off about a half hour off that because it takes you about 30 minutes to fall asleep typically, maybe a little less, right? So you're like, okay. According to my calculations, I get about six to six and a half hours of sleep. And I would surmise that if you're in your 20s and you're a male listening right now, you're probably averaging about six hours a night. That's or what less. I would say. Or, or maybe yeah. less. Okay. Add two, two hours of sleep to that. You can expect about a 15 to 25, maybe even 30% increase in testosterone. Boom. According like to the studies. According to these studies, just from doing that. So just sleeping more can have a profound effect on your hormone levels and testosterone levels. Profound. Now, does that affect everything else? Absolutely. I notice it, my gains in mm -hmm. the gym, strength, my mental clarity, pretty much everything. Now, how are you going to do this? Does this mean you just go to bed earlier? Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of it, but I think you need to take it a step further. I think you need to prepare for going to bed like you do with your workouts. Like before I go to do my workouts, I do my priming. I take my pre-workout or whatever, have my coffee. 30 minutes before I do my foam rolling or my priming, I visualize what I'm going to do. I spend a good 20 to 30 minutes before I work out, taking my workout seriously and preparing myself. You should do that at least before you go to bed. I like to do about an hour. About an hour before I go to bed, I turn all the lights down or I wear blue blocker glasses. I make everything calm, turn off all the electronics, maybe drink some chamomile tea. I allow my body time to settle so that when I go to bed, I get some really good. Yeah, awesome I mean, sleep. if you're getting really good sleep, do you really need like the pre workout and all these stimulants and all this stuff like right. going into it? It's like, <laughs> right. you know, I, I think that we're just conditioned, uh, you know, if you're a regular gym goer guy and like you're going in there and like it's part of the ritual. Like, think about that. Like, if you're getting good enough sleep, do you really need this excess amount of pre-workout to then, you know, charge your workout every time? You know, that that's actually, you, you bring up a good point that is, I've helped a lot of clients um, after I started doing this, when we were troubleshooting, like, you know, sometimes you try to help somebody with sleep and you just can't put your finger on it. What is it? We've tried this, we've tried this, we've tried yeah. that. And um, I've been surprised how many people don't realize uh, what a difference uh, the amount of caffeine they take in a day and or the time that they take oh, caffeine, huge. how much it can make an impact on your late night sleep. Like Huge. And I know for me uh, personally, I know my time. Like yeah. If I there's have a, there's a direct cutoff. I have a drop of caffeine post four o'clock, you can just guarantee it's going to ruin my sleep. Mm -hmm. just, yep. I mean, at, at all. So, And I also notice on days when I just have lots of it, like a day where I might have multiple cups of coffee or I do some sort of rock star or something out of the ordinary, like pay attention to the, the, the amount of caffeine and the time that you're taking it and then pay attention to that night's sleep. And one of the best things that you can do is either one, reduce the amount of caffeine you're intaking to help improve sleep or uh, pay attention to the timing that you're having it all. You should have a minimum of four to eight hours uh, between your last consumption of caffeine to sleep. Most people are actually on the higher end. Some people can get away with the, you know four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you stop drinking at four, you probably go to bed by 10. So that's about six hours. It's mm -hmm. about right. Mm -hmm. um, eight is probably where it wants to be. So if you're going to be in bed by 10 p.m., I wouldn't have caffeine past 2 p.m. If you're sensitive to caffeine like I am, I have caffeine anything past 1 or 2 p.m., and it's probably going to affect uh, my sleep. So that's a huge, huge tip. Right Now, the next one, uh, which goes along with sleep, would be 
stress management, uh, how you handle the stress in your life. Now, there's this common thing that gets repeated. We've probably said it on the show as well that, you know, today, today's day and age, we have a lot more stress in our lives. I don't think that's really fair. I think it's, it's not fair to, yeah, I don't think it's fair to past generations because let's be honest, uh, <laughs> I've never dealt with a, you know, yeah. a plague. Uh, right, I've, right. I've never dealt with yeah. a, a world war. Yeah, but it's the type or, of stress. Right? Yes. It's yeah. the, it's the type of stress. The type of stress that we, that we may have had in the past was acute. It was massive and then it went away. And the truth is the acute type of stress back then Fair, you know, if afraid for my life yeah. or survival something. stress probably actually helped. If anything, testosterone levels, and then the other type, the this low level constant stress, yes, is what I think is what's really hurting us, and that is what I think is it at normalized all time. it. That's what I think is at all time highs. Because I know you insult everybody who's sixty years old and older. Yeah, like, tell trust you, me, we were stressed out. Right, you know? it was yeah. way more stressful than well, different types of stress. Now we have this this type of stress that we don't count as stress, but it really is. It is, and when they, it's funny when you when you see studies with kids or you know in adolescence, they're so aware of all the dangerous shit that's happening all around the world. All the stresses, all the, oh my God, there's over here, it's going to, then there's this virus came out over here and then there's this climate change is happening, all this other stuff. For the most part, kids were pretty unaware of all the stuff. Even people in their 20s were like, whatever, you know, I, you know the, the, the 24 hour news network cycle was invented not that long ago. Yeah. So unless it, ha it was local or it was a big, big deal, you really didn't hear about it. This is part of stress management. So part of it is stop tuning into all this freaking insane news all the time. That makes a big difference. That's part of managing this kind of stress. The other part of managing this kind of stress is learn to shut some of it off. So don't let this, the work stress carry into the rest of your day. Leave it at work. Or if that's too hard for you to do, maybe create some practices. I was just going to say, this is where tools come mm -hmm. into play here. Like. Mm -hmm. This is where I think there's a lot of value to people using things like saunas and meditation and brain FM. Like this is where it makes a ton of sense is you recognize that you do because you know, at the end of the day, if your job creates a lot of stress, you got you still got to go to your damn job every single day. You can't just eliminate that. So then you find things and tools and resources to help mitigate some of that type of stress. Mm -hmm. And one of those things could be meditation or, you know, getting in the infrared yeah, breathing sauna, practices. right? Breathing practices, brain FM. These are all great tools that will help somebody in this case. Now there, there was, uh, I, this was uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was reading this article on nature's best, uh, stress buster. Uh, and it's a natural thing that we do that when we monitor humans and they do this, Cortisol levels drop, perceived stress goes down, um, and it's just it's immediate, and it's something we evolved with. So this is something that we all have, and it's a part of who we are, precisely because it is a powerful stress buster, and that's laughter. Laughter is phenomenal at doing this. You could think about uh, maybe times in your life when you were in a very stressful situation, yeah, and something made you laugh, immediately takes it all down. One of the best ways to manage stress is to laugh, is to be able to find things that you can laugh at and joke around about. Makes a tremendous, and they, they've actually tied <clears throat> laughter, men who laugh more often. They live longer, have, right? Yeah, they live longer, yeah. have lower I read, levels. I read that same thing. Lower levels of cortisol, cortisol, higher levels of testosterone. I also think now, too, a, a new practice that I don't think was important before was just becoming disconnected. Mm. You know, it's uh, you, you mean can, tech wise. Yeah, yeah. Te I mean, uh, as much as we all love Facebook and Instagram and all these tools that connects all of us together and allows us to build businesses, it also can cause a lot of stress and anxiety for the average person, especially if you're somebody who's constantly looking at your ex's page or comparing yourself to your <laughs> friends. Really, though, you know what I'm saying? that That's yeah. the low-level type of stress. Well, it's, it's constant. We didn't have that before. Like we're saying, like you'd go to work, you'd come home, and then it's a different it's a different environment. It's not like you'd bring it home with you. Now it's there always on the weekends. You know, you're just constantly thinking about it even because it's in your pocket. It's, now, er it's everywhere you go. Now, this is how insidious it is, right? You don't notice it. So... And this was an issue that I had too. I would hear stuff like this and I'd be like, I don't feel stressed. You may be thinking this to yourself. You may be listening to me. Yeah, that stuff doesn't really that's stress me That's the problem. Out. Here's how you know. Okay, that's because you don't know. You're in the middle of it. Here's how you know. Do a tech fast, okay? Go camping for a weekend. Go on a beach trip or something. Unplug from everything. 
And and then watch what happens after two or three days. You'll probably say the following words. Wow, that feels really yeah. nice. It feels yeah. great to yeah. not be on all that stuff. But the first half of it will be tough. <laughs> You'll have yeah. withdrawals. Right, yeah. You have withdrawals, need anxiety, me right now. Yeah. anxiety don't need doing you. it. Or you or you yeah. you just flat out deny doing it, right? Those are those are all signs that it might be a <laughs> or problem. Or you're texting. I'm totally like you know, going tech free right now. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. seen people do that. Yeah, like, and that's re- that's really what it is. Stress management is really about that. Because there are certain stresses in life that you can't do anything about, like you have a job to worry about. You have bills that you need to worry about, and all that stuff. It doesn't mean you're gonna, you know, not stress management doesn't mean I go live on a beach for the rest of my life and when I'm bored or whatever, because that's probably stressful in its own way, right? Lack of purpose and all that stuff. It's really about managing it, changing the way you view things, learning to laugh, and creating those practices. You know, unplugging. That's a great one, Adam. I think unplugging at some point during the day. I know, uh, you know, I've had clients who say at 7 p.m. it goes off. 7 p.m. I'm unplugged. You can't get a hold of me, whatever, unless you you have my landline or unless you're, you know, you're, it's an emergency. Other than that, I'm off at 7 p.m. What a great practice. What Does a anybody great have landlines? You guys, you don't have a landline, do you? No, my parents my do. My parents do, uh, too. Yeah. Do they really? I still? laugh because people leave them messages and everything. I'm like, this This is still a thing? I'm going to bring it back. I got a fax machine my, back here? My mom just got rid of her a, a cord phone. Oh my God! She had a landline, and the phone had a cord. <laughs> yes, dude, isn't that great? That's great. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, all right. So here's another one, um, and this one is actually again remarkable. Actually, all the ones we're going over today are, are very important. So we didn't pick any ones that are have small effects. They all have pretty large. Well, effects. I felt like I think when we were making this list, the only one that was like yes for sure number one was lifting weights. The rest of these you could argue depending on who I'm talking to and what the current state they're at. Like I could have somebody where tech could be like a number one cause because they oh, are sure yeah. right the rest of these i feel the priorities like priorities could shift right yeah i think the rest of these you could argue what's two three four and five yeah but they're uh, undoubtedly i think we all agreed that number one is lifting weights Definitely. but the rest of these are could be extremely Definitely. important to whoever i'm talking they, to they are now here's another one which is get enough sunlight um lack of sunlight has been connected to low testosterone levels part of it may be the low vitamin d that is the mm-hmm. result of lack of sunlight but some studies show that it's it's it could also be just from lack of sunlight itself. Not even the fact that you're not making uh, creating enough to, uh, uh, vitamin D, hmm. but just that we need sun. Its own like benefits. From we it, need sun. Hmm. Now this can be kind of tough. It's funny. It's like uh, when I would talk to clients about this, they would say things like, "Well, I'm inside all day. I work. Like, what, yeah, what do you what expect am I me to do?" To do about that? So what I used to tell them to do is I'd say, "Go outside and eat outside. Eat your lunch outside." I or, wonder if this explains Justin all the hipsters in Pacific Northwest and the, <laughs> and the high levels of depression up there. Yeah, low. I, yeah. They need could it be sun? sun? It needs to be the sunlight. Yeah, the I hipster. didn't even put that together. Nah, it's because they're wearing flannels and growing beards and they're not chopping wood. That's exactly that, what's, that's what's happening. happening. That's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> it, could be the la- it could be the lack of yeah. sunlight. Yeah. yeah. Here's another one. Um, when you're driving to work or on your way home, sunroof. Open your sunroof. Yeah. You don't even have to open the glass if it's raining or whatever. Just get some sunlight open so that the. That little bit that you get every single day makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, sitting next to the window. So when you're in your office or whatever and you need to do some work, go next to a window and get some sunlight. Shit, but, we talk about it all the time in the studio. What a difference. Oh, we feel oh, it, man. I, I always can tell a difference when we've been in here for hours working meetings and we're in this dungeon. Yeah, sometimes we got to just get up and go walk a couple of blocks. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. And when we do, I always feel a surge of energy from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but the, the low D levels and sunlight... Those are very big ones, which takes me to the next one. This one can be either very important mm. or not that big of a deal at all. Yeah. yeah, supplements. Now, the most important thing I would say to, to with supplements, one that can make a huge difference, is if you have a nutrient deficiency mm-hmm. that you then fill. Well, that like, can make your, a huge difference. Well, like impact. to your point with vitamin D. I mean, mm-hmm. that's something that I have to supplement for. It's something that I take on a regular basis. And if you're deficient there, it can make a world of a difference. Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, like, for example, low vitamin, low zinc and vitamin B uh, in the blood has been shown to, re- to reduce sperm quality by something like 70% or something insane like that. Wow. Yeah, and it, can, and it causes uh, you know bad effects on testosterone. Low levels of vitamin A, C, and E. Um, can also play a role. Of course, we talked about vitamin D. Now, here's the thing with this. Now, you can go and take a multivitamin um, and to make sure that all your bases are covered. Um, the problem with that is too much yeah. of certain nutrients is also not necessarily like a good shotgun thing. approach. Yeah, yeah I would recommend um, getting your nutrients tested, uh, which you can do. You can either do them 
Um, I know Everly Well, which is a company we work with, does nutrient testing. Um, or you can go to your doctor. But if you see that your zinc is low or your vitamin D is low, oh my gosh, the the difference yeah, it makes. There's your targets. Oh my god, you take somebody with low D levels, have them get their D levels up to normal. It's like you gave them. Well, this is a, magic. We've, we've talked about this since we've started right. this podcast about supplementation, and there's a huge market around muscle building and fat loss type of supplementation, but nothing will will improve your ability to build more muscle and lose body fat or a naturally increased hormonal levels than getting yourself balanced. And so supplementing with what you need is far more impactful than buying the latest and greatest fat burner or muscle builder. So figuring out where you lack and all the, and again, always trying to target this through diet, right? Like yeah. a, we'll, we'll always push people to go. Uh, oh yeah. Like, Oh, B levels are low or I'm going to eat more meat you right. know, or zinc is low. I'm going to eat some clams or whatever. Right. So always trying to get it through whole foods first. But if that's something that you lack in or you have a hard time doing, this is where it does make sense to supplement for your needs. Totally. Um, now there are some non, you know, nutrient type supplements that can also benefit. So we just talked about your vitamins and minerals, right? If you're lacking one of them, uh, supplementing with them or eating foods that contain levels of those that are adequate will in positively influence testosterone. But what about other supplements? Well, here, here's a couple of them. Creatine. Creatine in combination with resistance training has now been shown in studies to positively affect testosterone levels, especially in men with low testosterone levels. Now, I love creatine. I think creatine is the best ergogenic supplement you can take hands down. It's got the most studies uh, that support it of all any supplement I can think of. It's extremely safe uh, for most people, um, and it's got uh, health benefits, not just muscle building benefits. One of them being it could help with lower testosterone, especially in combination with resistance training. But there are also herbs and other things you can take as well. Um, one of my favorites, uh, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha uh, made a lot of noise a few years ago because it was it was one of the only herbs to consistently raise testosterone levels in men with moderate to low testosterone levels across the board. So they would supplement with this and they'd see this nice, decent boost with it. It's considered an adaptogenic mm. herb, meaning it helps the body deal with stress. Um, ginseng is another one. Um, there's different forms of ginseng, Siberian and Panax. Siberian is the one that I like uh, a little bit better for most people. Um, I know Four Sigmatic makes a uh, adaptogenic blend, I believe, that contains both of those, which mm -hmm. I think... For overall health, it's it's a great supplement. But if you have low testosterone, great supplement. So long as you're doing the other stuff too, by the way. I do want to say that. Supplements won't do anything for you if your diet and your workout is is not happening. Right. But you throw those on top of it and you can note you start to notice that 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 boost uh, you know, that, that you can get from those types of herbs. Now, what about things to avoid? Things to avoid. Well, so here's the least important mm, one. Babies. But, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, they really kill your testosterone. Yeah, yeah. Um, This one's the least important, I would say, for now. But studies are coming out and they're showing some pretty crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Estrogen-like compounds, xenoestrogens. Uh, they're found in plastics like BPA, uh, parabens. Um, those have been shown to have estrogenic anti-testosterone effects in uh, boys and in men. Now, here's this is one of the ones that the you know are the science guys really harp on the wellness people that talk about BPA and things like that. But this is uh, it's probably because it's their number one that they'll bring up a lot of times, right? And so I, I that's where I so this is where I agree with the the hardcore academics that will you know crap on those studies and talk about how small of a difference and is it it's so insignificant that it doesn't matter that much. And yeah, you know what? In a healthy individual, you're probably right. It's probably we're probably splitting hairs on on what a big difference it may. But if you're somebody who has abnormally low testosterone levels and this has been connected to that, yeah. it just seems like this should be one of the boxes that you also check. Yeah, if you're sure. if, especially if you're especially sensitive to it and maybe you you don't even know, you might be you might be being exposed to high levels of one of these chemicals and not realize it. Mm -hmm. I read a story of a, a young man where that was happening where his testosterone levels were low, he was getting gynecomastia and other signs of high of estrogen. Took him years to figure it out, but it was uh, some of his products that we're using that were had exceptionally high levels of some of these xenoestrogen xeno, type properties. They took it out, 
And within months, he got better. Now, do you yeah. recommend? What do you recommend? Somebody Google's products that are high in BPA, or like, what do you? Yeah, what, what are some of the biggest? Effects? I know, like water bottles. Like typically, they, they, they microwave try to address plastic that is bad. Like any kind of like uh, skin products or like yeah, hair I w- products. I would avoid parabens. So you want to go look at products that's in the say paraben free shampoos, um, hand lotions, that kind of stuff. Um, and then when you buy products, that, you know, plastic uh, bottles and stuff like that, you want BPA free. Mm-hmm. And then Adam said something. You're you're right. You don't want to microwave in plastic. That's been shown to leach some of the the, the chemicals from the plastic into your food because of, of the heat. Do or you whatever. see that a lot in the bodybuilding community with the, all the different like uh, six pack you know oh, options? I'm guilty of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, the six pack bags sells in plastic. It's all they're plastic bags. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't until Doug, that was one of Doug's Christmas gifts. Was it Christmas or birthday gifts you got me that? I don't remember what it was for, where he got me all the- Convert you over to glass. Yeah, yeah. converted all my containers over to glass because he saw me coming in there with plastic every single day. (laughs) So, no, I'm I'm 100% guilty of just throwing it in there. Now, the bodybuilding- Killing your gains, bros. And when you look at the bodybuilding community, you think, oh, they they don't seem to have low testosterone. It doesn't (laughs) matter to them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're shooting it into you. We'll just add a few more cc's. They're taking so much testosterone, BPA and estrogen blockers on top of it. Yeah, right. It's not going to do much. Yeah, in that case. The other ones, too, that have estrogenic properties, uh, alcohol and a lot of marijuana. So marijuana was the one I did notice a difference. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, even though I, I talk openly about smoking weed and a uh, big fan of marijuana, I, I'm not like this huge pothead where I'm smoking throughout the day. It's like a... Uh, it's a pretty regular thing for me to do at nighttime, the same way probably somebody has a glass of wine at night. Uh, I take a couple hits of something before I go to bed or when I'm relaxing to watch a little TV at night, and it's on a, a semi-regular basis. I would say almost every every other night or so for sure you can guarantee that I am. And when we were you know, troubleshooting all the things that, you know, what boxes was I checking when I was trying to in- increase my uh, hormone levels, I remember Sal bringing that up. Well, have you tried to like do a fast for a while? from marijuana and at that time I hadn't in a while and it did make a difference mm. um, it, 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 I noticed a difference when I came completely off uh, it only took about a week or so and I felt uh, the increase uh, but I, I also if it's it's low and what I noticed was if it was like a, a day or two of like heavy smoking let's say it was a weekend I was hanging out with friends and we just we, and they were also people that smoke and we decided to smoke all day and you know goof around or whatever it was that we were doing those days would be the days that I noticed uh, that my I'd have lower levels, or I'd even in my case because I've battled with gyno, I would notice that I'd have a flare up mm-hmm. after that. And by reducing the amount that I was consuming, I noticed made a difference. Yeah, in animal studies, cannabis reliably affects the uh, reproductive system of animals. In humans, the studies are are mixed, um, but I will definitely place my bet that it affects humans in similar ways uh, to animals in terms of, you know, and, and for men, lowering testosterone levels may be uh, one of the things. And this may be why marijuana was connected to... Uh, marijuana, the, the compounds in cannabis are very anti-cancer, except for a couple cancers. There's actually a couple cancers that cannabis can actually uh, drive, one of them being testicular cancer. Um, and it makes sense because of the mm. way it affects the uh, reproductive system. So those would be things... Those are all the things that I would avoid... Um, so there you go. Follow those those steps that we talked about um, and uh, and watch what happens. Test your testosterone levels now, then do all those things. Give yourself about 90 days. I was just going to say, you've got to give yourself some time and be consistent. This is yeah. not a try try one or two things. Oh, tomorrow, the next day, all of a sudden no. you feel this huge increase. Yeah. You need to be consistent with it. And give I mean, it at least 90 days. I would say maybe even a little longer than that. And then watch what happens and you should see a pretty measurable rise in your testosterone levels. And if you're somebody who's, uh, you know, we you mentioned Everly Well, this is a, another area where I highly recommend, you know, you pick up two or three tests from them, you you test right away, and then you go through this protocol, you start to manipulate, you know, two or three or all seven of these things that we just discussed, and then test again 60 to 90 days later to, to, to notice the difference. And I, you, I promise that if you are consistent uh, with the seven things that we talked about, uh, you'll see a difference. You should see a difference. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.